This is AMD's China exclusive graphics card. It's the AMD Radeon RX 470D. The chances are you've heard of the RX 470, but possibly not the RX 470D. So here I have an RX 470, which is the Sapphire Platinum card, as well as the RX 470D, which is this Sapphire Nitro card. The RX 470D was only sold in China and was made to compete with the GTX 1050 Ti. As the name suggests, the RX 470D is similar to that of the RX 470, but with slightly less cores and a lower texture unit count. This places it somewhere between the RX 460 and the RX 470 in terms of performance. It is suggested that this card was only released in China for the vast amount of internet cafes. You see, in China there are many internet cafes, and when the owners of these places want graphics cards, they're gonna buy many of them. So, they need the absolute best price and best performance. Additionally, in around 2016 when this card was released, the most popular cards in the internet cafes were mainly NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1050s, 1050Ti's and 1060's. In fact, NVIDIA had their own China exclusive graphics card for internet cafes, and that was the GTX 1060 5GB. You can watch that video up here. So AMD released this card for a cheaper price than the RX 470 which would greatly improve their market share in this region, as it performs better than the 1050Ti and for a similar price as the 1050Ti. So taking a look at these graphics cards, you can see that the RX 470 has 3 display ports and 1 HDMI, a single fan, a 6 pin power connector which is interesting to note, and it's not in the best of conditions after 8 years. And on the 470D we have an 8 pin power connector which is higher than the 470, although this does depend on which particular card you get. It has dual fans and a single DVI port. And if you're wondering, is the single DVI port standard? No, it's not. Usually the RX 470D has a display port and a HDMI as well, but at some point it appears that these manufacturers started making mining cards using the RX 470 chip. It makes sense as the RX 470 did used to be quite good at mining, however this card has the standard gaming BIOS installed, but it does mean you're stuck with using just a DVI port. So let's talk about the specs of these two cards. The main differences between these two cards is that the RX 470D has 1792 stream processors, whereas the RX 470 has 2048. The other main difference is that there are 112 texture units on the 470D and 128 on the 470. The GPU clock and memory clock are the same at 1284MHz and 8GB of GDDR5. The TDP is not 100% clear on the 470D, but it does appear like it uses more power than the RX 470, especially considering that it has two extra PCIe power connector pins. Okay, so let's test out some games. So we now plugged in the 470D, and we're in the desktop. You can see that the AMD software recognizes it as the 470 series with 8GB of memory. It also shows the same thing on GPU-Z, but here we can see the shader units are at 1792 and the TMUs, aka texture units, are at 112, so this is the RX 470D. So in GTA 5 at ultra settings 1080p with MSAA x4, the RX 470 got a good average of 47.2 FPS, whereas the RX 470 got 47.8 FPS. These two values are extremely close and pretty much identical. The 1% and 0.1% lows were also very similar with the RX 470D getting 33.1 FPS and 32.1 FPS respectively. The RX 470 got 33.7 and 32.7 for its 1% and 0.1% lows. Both of these cards performed extremely well here and beat the 1050 Ti. In Red Dead Redemption 2, the RX 470D got an average of 24.9 FPS with a 1% low of 17.7 and a 0.1% low of 16.1 FPS. In comparison, the RX 470 got 25.9 FPS with a 1% low of 20.5 and a 0.1% low of 15.9 FPS. This was on a mix of ultra and high settings, with MSAA turned off, and all the FPSs were very very similar. Forza Horizon 5 next at ultra settings 1080p and the RX 470D got an average of 48.3 FPS with a 1% low of 36.8 and a 0.1% low of 16.8 FPS. So there was a bit of stuttering here and there as shown by the 1% and 0.1% lows but it was perfectly playable and a very good experience. We could have turned down the settings to high if we wanted to get some better FPS. The RX 470 achieved slightly higher frames than that of the 470D but again, by not very much. 
The RX 470D got 51.8 average FPS with a 1% low of 41 and a 0.1% low of 10.5. Tomb Raider gave us a respectable 41.1 FPS for the RX 470D and 41.3 FPS for the RX 470. Again, these two results are very similar. The 1% lows and 0.1% lows for the 470D were 34.3 and 18.8 FPS respectively, and 35 and 24.3 respectively for the 470. So the RX 470 did have less stuttering, but honestly you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between the two GPUs in this game. Starfield at the high preset gave us 33.8 FPS average with a 1% low of 16.4 and a 0.1% low of 14.6 for the 470D. This was playable, but turning the settings down a little bit could have given us some slightly better FPS. The 470 did slightly better with an average of 36 FPS, with a 1% low of 22.6 and a 0.1% low of 16.6 FPS. Counter Strike 2 at high settings, MSAA 4 times. We got 105.8 FPS average for the 470D and 112.3 FPS for the 470. If you were playing esports titles like CS, you would probably turn down these settings to low to get the best FPS. In 3D Mark, the RX 470D got a graphics score of 3724, and the RX 470 got a graphics score of 3736. So as you can see, these scores are very, very similar. So we have seen the RX 470D performs quite well. So why is it China exclusive? Although it's not 100% known, the common theories are to do with its power consumption. You see, the RX 470D has a TDP of greater than 120 watts, but its competitor card, the GTX 1050 Ti, has a TDP of just 75 watts. That's a large difference in power usage. Gaming cafes in China would have a lot of these cards, so you'd think that they would want to use less power to save on costs. But, you have to know in China, the cost of energy is far less than in other countries. For instance, the cost of electricity in China is three times less when compared to the UK. This means the extra performance boost probably makes it worth it, just for the extra power it uses. It wouldn't make too much sense for AMD to release this card in Western countries since the power cost is quite high, but it performs less than the RX 470, so they would just expect you to get an RX 470. So the RX 470D is pretty decent. It's only slightly less than the RX 470 in terms of performance, and it still outperforms the GTX 1050 Ti and even the 1650 in some cases. Thanks for watching.